What's up, everybody? Mason here, CNA Games. Appreciate you watching, clicking on the video, supporting the channel, supporting the store. New series, ser episode one, right now. Let's bulk up. We gotta bulk up, fill up this inventory on TCG Player, and get direct. Chugging along, really, really solid. So, this is, I talked about in the, the, the re reboot video that I already did, but this is basically us trying to get as much cards in the inventory as possible. And kind of like the, 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 the way that we do it, the, the process, um, you know, along the way, how long did it take, things like that. So, we've been at it for, uh, I guess that was a week ago I made that video. Uh, I think we were at 40-something thousand. Um, if you look, uh, here's our, our inventories currently. It's, uh, can you even see this? I'm sorry if you can't. Uh, it's uh, 39714. What happened? It went down. What? What? So, we actually uh, had blown up the magic inventory, but now we blew up the Pokemon inventory. And we're glad we did because it was all a disaster. So, it was really, really bad. So, uh, all those things are getting back in the system. We still have some ways to go to put all that back in. Uh, it was really sad because our guys were all excited because they had hit 50,000 cards. We were at 50,000. We're like, all right, cool, yeah, that's awesome. And then... I was like, all right, let's blow up the Pokemon inventory. And then we lost like 15,000. So that's uh, where we're at on that. But, you know, every day uh, we, we add some more sorts in. This is These are all sorts to, to go in the system. So those are all waiting to get filed away. And then we upload those to TCG Player. And then they're ready for sale. So what are some other things that we've done? We've, uh, we've tried to come up with the price point and, and the... A way of putting this stuff in the system that really maximizes our our bang for our buck, uh, our manpower uh, per sale, and then just the effort has to go back out into these to try to put these away and organize them really well. I kind of like this shot. This is kind of nice. Okay, so that's the the main thing that we've been working on is trying to come up with a a a algorithm or a a pricing. Uh, range that we feel comfortable with so we we found out we were going to just put everything in the system uh send everything through the rokas the rokas are going to spit out csvs and you know if we have 500 of a single card in the system so be it right that's kind of, just kind of how it is that's how you got to grow we are trying to come up with a way to limit the amount of cards we have and we'd like to do it based on our active live inventory unfortunately with all the robots and all the technology that we have, there's no way to kind of compare those numbers and put those in to our live inventory when we go to file something away in the system. Or even when we run it through the Rokas and say, hey, if I have more than 20 cards of this single card, uh, go and just reject it, put in the reject, because I have too many. I don't want any more than 20. There's no way to do that. There's no intelligent way to do that currently, which is something that seems like is pretty lacking and something that we should probably... Uh, be prioritizing for when we talk to these companies to make updates. Uh, that's that'd be super essential to have that kind of information and be able to have your live inventory attached to the machine while it's running and be able to make those types of decisions. That might slow sorts down. It may take longer for the back and forth to communicate and get that information. Uh, maybe you download it once a day and then you have it based off of that. That'd be okay too. It would not be instantaneous, but. Something like that would be definitely a smarter way of doing it than just throw everything at the system and see what happens. So, there's also the thought of, I don't want to put in cards that are never going to sell. There are potentially, and we have in the past, just put tons of stuff in the system, and they sat there, and for the entire length of time, we haven't sold a single card of that. That is a waste of labor waste of the machine's time, a waste of uploading time, processing time, uh, sorting time, putting things away takes time, uh, and it just clogs up the inventory of stuff that we may need space for and, and just want to not have to worry about flipping through 100 cards of a set that are never going to sell to get through the cards that do, right? So what price point do we sift cards from our bulk? to make it worth it. So we're going back and forth on that and trying to decide. And ultimately we, we were at 10 cents and then we were like, well, let's do none. And then now we're at, we're at five cents. 
we figure something that's five cents that it must have enough throughput or at least have enough inherent value to go through the system and be processed because even if we're not going to sell that card for five cents we're going to sell it for hopefully more through direct but that should be a good enough metric to kind of have an idea of throughput for that card if a card is at one cent either there is thousands and thousands and thousands of that card listed and the price just is what it is or there's no sales at all and everybody that throws a card in there, they're just going lower and lower and lower until it's zero or, you know, a, a penny. And then it sits there and, and nothing sells, right? No matter how low the price is, no price is low enough for that card to sell. That happens. In fact, that happens to probably a lot of cards for sets, especially with like Pokemon. Pokemon has <laughs> Caterpies and, and all these other crap Pokemon that nobody wants that will never sell. So it's trying to, again, figure out what is worth the effort and, and filling up our inventory with things that will sell or hopefully sell while also kind of balancing having cheap stuff that people do want that is cheap but having that available and and for people to buy so um the price range that we're we are using is five cents uh things that are below that do not go into the system and that is you'd be surprised how many cards that actually is uh from a set it's staggering and it cuts our, our workload by almost uh i think it was like a third a third of the, the sets that exist and the cards that exist do not go into the system at five cents. <coughs> so that is the current strategy. It may change. We're always trying to figure this out and it's in flux. But so that is what we are using currently. We have also increased our minimum of card listings. No card is listed below 50 cents now. That is high. That is a, a high price for card singles but again we want to have things available we want to have things uh for for locals and most time and we've seen it with the the prices for people that even just want to buy people will pay two dollars for a 15 cent card to be shipped to them we had that daily from uh sales on tsg player and through the direct program uh that, that stuff sold obviously as well but even mailed shipped from us people were paying two dollars shipping plus the 15 cents so again that is assuming everything is uh, even working in in tip-top condition we cannot 15 cents is not worth it it's just not so until we maybe get a big inventory and maybe we want to ratchet the number down lower which we eventually may you know we never know but we would like to just keep it at 50 cents uh, again, if any single card somebody wants, if you want to pay 50, 50 cents for it, that's, that's a deal. Somebody that walks into the door and wants a card for 50 cents, uh, I think that's a, 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 a reasonable price for somebody to pay for something that is here. It's now. It's in the system. You know I have it. It's, it's The price of convenience is going to be that. And that ultimately is what it comes down to. And, and no one's compla complained about it so far. And, and, and people are frankly happy to have that we have... The cheaper stuff and it's sticking around it is so uh, uh aggravating to list a card for 15 cents and it sells overnight and then i'm like okay well i a didn't make any money <laughs> and then b somebody that wanted that in store or something that is like people that do want this card it's it's gone now and i made nothing next to nothing it's 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 probably negative the amount of money that i made uh just to have that card even if it's sold on direct that's that's where we're at so we're gonna play with that that's not a permanent like locked in 100 percent. that's yes that's what we're doing but again uh we're keeping it 50 cents for a card and then uh if people want uh, or as our inventory grows and we have a, a wider selection we're going to see how the sales do uh, because i was talking to uh i have like a they call it the growth some, some algorithm but it's a growth growth program for a tg player uh, shout out to Sam. Sam, if you're watching, appreciate you for all your insight. Uh, I'm not going to spill all the beans, but just some information. Uh, it's a great program for people that are wanting to level up and get bigger and, and kind of do cooler stuff on TCG Player. Sam has access and knowledge of, of all the things, and I'm sure everybody that you'd work with through that program has the same level of information and knowledge, and uh, they're happy to help you. Help you, happy to get you information, and if they don't have it, they will look at 
up for you and try to figure it out the best I can because they, they're there to help you and make your business succeed. That's the whole idea. So uh, shout out to Sam. But uh, I think this, this I can tell because it was in a, a thing that things on direct, things on direct sell for on average. Uh, oh, I should probably not make up numbers. Anyways, it's, I think it's 20% higher for things that are from zero to $3. 20% higher. That means you can get 20% more for that card, selling it on direct, for something that is below $3. And then from $3 to $20, it was another like a uh, double figure. I think it's like 11, 11 something, 11% more. And then uh, 20 plus, it was like six, six dollars, six percent, or, 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 or on average. So if you think about that type of metrics and percentages, okay, uh, if a card is I sell cards flying for 15 cents, right? So in theory, that's what uh, I could sell it for. What's 20% of 15? Who knows? <laughs> math. Math is, well, $20 or 20, 20 cents, 23, 22 cents, whatever it is. I'm sorry. It's, I'm not going to do that. But you get my point. Like, I don't have to match low. I have to match direct low. And then work with those parameters with people that, are in the direct program because that's more than likely where these cheap cards are going to sell. I want these cheap cards to sell that way. I don't want to have to ship 50 cent cards. Even even at 50 cent cards, I don't want to have to ship that because I have to pay somebody to do that, pull it, sort it, uh, put it away, pull it back. It's just a lot of work. A lot of hands have to touch that card for 50 cents and then, it's, you know, you get fees taken out and all that. It's, it's, it's just not, it's not worth the time. So that's what we're grappling with. That's what we're looking at um, as we scale, get more and more cards in the system, we're going to tinker with that. But for right now, that's what we got. Um, but we got the Rokas, both uh, firing away, working on these sorts to get these uh, stuff in the system, put away. Uh, Pokemon went through the Roka. Uh, it, it, it struggles with Pokemon. It's, it's, it's not 100% perfect. It's good enough for us to keep using it, but I'm not 100% happy with how it is. Uh, it thinks a lot of things are from... Uh, the Battle Academy, and, and you know, have a, they have, like, the little Eevee or, like, the Pikachu head in the corner uh, for those things that are in, like, the Battle Academy. It puts all these supporters and stuff in the Battle Academy, I don't know, and it's it's not. So uh, it still has some, some honing in that it needs to do, and I don't know if that's something that we can tighten up on our end, or maybe it's just it is what it is. I'm not sure. But uh, still, it's always a work in progress, some tinkering that I have to do. Uh, the Fizz Batch from TCU Machines, the, the sifting robot that we have, uh, it's not detecting foils right now. Uh, I, I, I know I watched them do foils at Gamma with Pokemon, so I have to get with them and see what's going on. I want to really sit down and, and have that machine. I, I want to be able to just to throw Pokemon through it and just have it just make beautiful piles for me so I can really speed up the process because the Pokemon has to be so efficient and lean for it to make money magic has is, is magic's a player's game right people come in and buy these cards and they want those cards for decks and there's so many cards in magic that are used but are cheap they're cheap but they're, they get played and they have sell through there's so many cards in pokemon that are that do not see sell through and you have to be able to sort that stuff all out out you know the good stuff from the bad stuff and then you have to do that as fast as possible so that you don't waste labor trying to sift that out yourself. I can go back there, I can say, yep, that's playable, that's playable, that's not, that's this, and all this stuff for these cards, but that's not a good use of my time. It's not a good use of the business's time as well. So that's uh, that's the struggle that we are in when we try to go through this stuff and try to figure out what exactly is is worth our time, what's not worth our time, what what metrics do we use to, to get there. It's it's constantly in flux and and I would I, I would love to see how other stores are doing it because uh you know all that is just more data points for me that's why i you know even though i'm not a a brand new seller to tcu player I, I am in the growth program because i can ask them questions and they have information that i i would never have access to if not in the program so that's that's value that they they give me right away even uh sam when i was signed up for he's like yeah i don't know if this is going to be good use for you but trust me I, I look forward to those conversations because I'm able to ask questions that I've accumulated over that time and be like, oh, I don't know. How do I, let me get this information from, and see if they can look it up and, and, and give me this 
information. It's great. It's a great, great program. If you're not in it, get in it because um, you learn so much. So that that's where we're at. That is episode one of Bulking Up at Cardinal. Uh, it's it's a process. It's every day. Every day is something that we may change. Figuring out the the, the workflow that makes the most sense, being most efficient as possible. That is all stuff that we are actively working on every single day, every single Roka sort, every single uh, printout, everything that we, we do is trying to refine and better this process. That's how it should be. That's how you should be doing things. Um, it does take time, though, to kind of dial things in. So that's what we're working on. We, we will make this a lean card processing machine. It's just going to take a while to get there. But hopefully uh, I'll have you guys along for the ride, and I'll be able to talk through it and uh, hopefully get some feedback about which, how you guys do it. If you uh, sell on direct or you want to sell on direct, how would you do it? Let me know. But I'll let you guys go. Appreciate you watching. See you in the next episode. Okay. Bye.